Welcome back to School of Calisthenics. It is Q&A number. I've started and I don't actually I know. I think it's 13, Or Tim. 12. It's the... Either way, it's one of them. It's, this is this is probably the most awkward because somebody's become has come between <laughs> me and Jacko, and it also needed to, to dilute our bromance a little bit. So I think welcome to the team, Thank Lani. Uh, we're going to kick off this with this, this a little bit of a different Q and A because we're not actually going to give you opportunity to ask any questions this week. We just want to know a little bit more about Lani, and we're going to talk a little bit about her training history, where she came from, and she's done some pretty cool stuff, and what she's learned along the way. So hopefully, there's going to be loads of value within this. Um, but start off, Lonnie, tell us a little bit about your sports career and then how you came to meet possibly two of the greatest people in calisthenics. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, Where I... are they? <laughs> <laughs> They're coming later. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. You've got some guests. This is actually going to be a great Q&A. <laughs> two great two people are coming later. <laughs> two special guests. <laughs> um, yeah, right, so I was born in Australia. The and um, Yeah, probably can tell. Um, and it's obviously a very active... Whereabouts in Australia? Place, but, um, I grew up in Brisbane, but I was born in Melbourne. Well, Brisbane. just outside of Melbourne in a small country town. So nice, mate. Grew up in the country. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Brisbane is where I grew up until I was 18. And I always did different types of sports. So I did touch football, soccer, hockey. And then I focused on triathlons and velodrome cycling for... Um, a couple of years when I was about 15, 16. So were you any good at those or were you just a bit of an all-rounder at that point? I was quite an all-rounder. I would say I was quite good at triathlons and I did like regional level, so maybe like county level. Yeah. Um, yeah. I never like did national level and then did velodrome cycling and I really enjoyed that. But um, yeah, one day my dad said, why don't you try kayaking? Because both my parents were both uh, represented Great Britain and Australia for marathon kayaking. Head degree. Yeah. So, yeah. right. I degree. actually hated the sport to begin with. And that was good. I was you say it because it, it sounded like you're going, like, I tried all these things <laughs> and I just kept trying stuff until I found one that I was really, really good at. Yeah, yeah. People that do kayaking, they do it because they can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents did it and they're like, why don't you try it? And I, I gave it a go and I actually really enjoyed it. Because when I tried it when I was like six, I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. Um, and yeah, I made it on the Australian team quite quickly and I got to travel the world. So I was like, I'm onto something here. Like, this is quite <laughs> this cool. Is all right. I get to go to Europe and... <laughs> yeah. And yeah. how old were you at that, at that stage? Uh, I was first represented Australia when I was 16. Okay. Um, and then uh, that was for marathon kayaking. And I think we, it was, the worlds were in Australia, actually. Uh, I don't think we did that great. And then the next year I was like, right, I'm going to focus on doing K1, which is single kayaks. And I Sprint raced, distance, right? Uh, marathon. Marathon, straight, okay. Yeah, for this one. And I actually, I got silver medal at the World Champs. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm liking nice. this. This is quite cool. Yeah. Um, so and I'm actually then, going, Dad, this is a bit crap. So actually, <laughs> yeah. when someone goes, here's a medal, you go, actually, yeah, I like this. This yeah. is all right. Well, I loved running when I was younger. So marathon kayaking, basically, it's done on a lap system. So every right. lap, so I think you do five laps when you're a junior. Every lap, you have to get out and run with your boat. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool, I can run. Some of these girls, they just can't run. How far do you have to run? About 150 meters. Oh, okay. Holding well, a carry boat. in the boat. Oh, yeah, oh, holding nice. your boat. But some of the girls couldn't run. So I was like, this is ideal. I can just like leg it and then <laughs> so you pass them on that get rid of them. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, so I kept on doing that. And I also did sprint canoeing, which is, or kayaking, um, which is the Olympic distance. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then when I was 18, I decided I was going to move to the UK because my parents, as I say, represented Great Britain and I kind of wanted to follow in their footsteps. So. Oh, nice. So when your I parents are British? Yeah, my whole family's British. But you just so had moved over to Australia. Two months before there. I was born, they moved. Oh, and wow. then when you moved back to us, back, so when, not back, when you moved to the UK, yeah. what, on your own or with your parents? No, on my own. Oh, right. I decided when I was 18, I was like, well, I don't have anything that's like tying me down in Australia. Mm. Um, I'd finished school and I didn't want to go to uni at that stage, so I was like, right, I'm gonna. And was that because the Europe. opportunities to actually be pro in kayak were greater? Yeah, at, at, at that stage, I could I could come to the UK and there was funding mm. um, with that UK sport. They fund Taking fund us. Money. So yeah. coming over yeah, here, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> winning medal, take it. That's all right. So you I've got a British right. passport. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am dual citizenship. <laughs> Um, so there was more support over here. We had access to physios, strength and conditioning, doctors, yeah. everything we needed. Um, so yeah, I, I actually spent, before I moved, I spent six months in the UK working and training to see if I liked it. Okay. Um, and yeah, I did, so I moved over. And then I have been was part of the British women's kayaking, sprint kayaking team for the last 
eight years and then last year I came off of the sprint program and focused on marathon kayaking. And tell us a little bit about um, what happened in the lead up because this is probably a really unique thing from an athlete perspective but the lead up to Rio 2016 go from what happened at qualification and then the whole thing that the, the, the backstory around how you actually have ended up going to Rio and competing because it's it just shows like from when you, when you think about adversity and, and just kind of cracking on despite a few bumps in the road and then making the best of the situations it presents itself. It's it, it, like, I, I think that when you've invested so much time and energy in something, the highs and lows that you went through, yeah. it's just some unreal. Yeah, no, definitely. So I actually just missed out on London 2012. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, it was very, very close to going and that didn't happen. So I was pretty devastated once when that happened and I had to reassess whether I wanted to continue. Mm. How um, old were you then? I would have been, what, 24? 20, yeah, 23, 24, mm. yeah. Um, so I decided no, I was going to keep on going and give it another shot and in 2015 you have your qualifiers, so the year before the Olympics you qualify and I was racing in the K2 which is a doubles event and um, you have to, the K2 is quite a hard event to qualify because you've got to get top six but European, we're in the European continent so it's, it's the hardest continent to qualify um, but so you have to get top six but within that top six there has to be maybe someone from Australasia, Africa, mm. or... Okay, yeah. yeah but there's America. only one slot on the British team, isn't yeah. there? One boat goes, so yeah. if you're not the, the number one boat, it's not like, we, like a, three or four people get to go with athletics yeah. or whatever, no. it's literally number one. Yeah, so you can only, yeah. So we, we got eighth, and so we were like, oh, we've missed it. But there was girls, so it works, it's really complicated, but there's countback spots, so if people are dubbing up in events, mm. then those spots actually end up giving, getting counted okay. back. So yeah, it yeah. worked out that we, we, we finished that weekend and we got told, you know, you guys have qualified that boat. Not necessarily us, like yeah, we yeah. might not go in that boat. But we the, still have to keep on performing. You made the boat qualified. But that boat got qualified and then it all got, got changed around and things got like within, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, not in our program, but like internationally. Right. And it ended up that we didn't have those spots anymore. So from going, getting told that there was a good chance that yeah. if you kept training that boat and you won the selections the next year, you, could go to the Olympics so that was pretty devastating it went through like loads of court appeals and everything mm. and we found out we had um, we then had a second time to try and qualify in May and you have you, there's only one spot there you have to win mm. it and we got third so we mm. were like that's it we're not I'm not going to the Olympics yeah, yeah. anymore um, and then the next weekend there was a World Cup and someone was like no no some people have been like some countries have been done for drugs, you guys have got the next spot. Right. So I was like, I've okay. just had this like weekend where you're not going, you're not going to the Olympics anymore. You just had a bender for a week. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how much wine I've just drunk. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, what? <laughs> like, amazing. But then you just got people saying these things. Yeah. There's no like, it's just, there's no clarity or anything. Mm. So then that went all through another court process of, right. and then basically we found out 12 days before the Olympics that we were going yeah we'd won so this whole time you we still you were. we didn't know we were going so this whole time every day you come to training or oh, it might happen yeah next yeah. day that's no, not happening so you just you, you, you're training just yeah. on the off chance that you're hoping yeah. that something might yeah. which is tough like in terms of motivation it sure. was hard like mentally like I think I'm quite mentally strong mm. and it definitely challenged me. Yeah, <laughs> everybody else knows they're going, right? The rest of the well, team is packing bags. Yeah, there's four other girls that are already qu like qualified yeah. in the K4, and and there's my my K2 partner at the time, and I, and we're just you know yeah. turning up to training every day. We don't train with those other girls. They they're focusing on their boat, so it's just us too. And um, yeah, that was hard because you'd have one day when I was down and she was up, and then the opposite. Yeah. So you, mm -hmm. you you're helping. You have to try and pick each other up at yeah. the same time. So yeah, to get. To get the call to say we were going was in incredible. Like, it was such an amazing experience to go, but um, yeah, when we got there, like, we, we didn't have the best results that yeah, we, yeah. we could have got, but. Less than ideal preparation. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really, it's such a shame because you think, like, when you sit on that start line for an Olympics, you think, you never think you're not going to be in the best yeah, shape yeah. possible. Yeah. And, like, we did everything we could, like we yeah. couldn't have done any more, but I think mentally and like physically it mm. just drained us. I think it's really interesting because we do some work in swimming and there's another um, guy that we, we do some work with that he won't mind me talking about, but James Curtin and, and his story is, is similar. Like, 
we kind of people will sit at home and they'll watch the Olympics and they'll see these guys you're in a prime of your life oh, why did you not perform and you said like there's so much stuff which the media don't report like, there's so, so much many money stories. that goes into the sports and yeah. stuff yeah. and yeah, it's actually like more. people don't don't know the sorts of stuff you've been through but a lot of the stuff that we do from a sports performance perspective is just trying to make that journey as smooth as possible we don't yeah. want any bumps in the road we don't want any turbulence so for you being are we going we're not going we are going we're not going yeah. right you're going flipping all of a sudden and like pack your bags get on the plane yeah. and, and now go and perform like it's, it's yeah. a lot to do against yeah. people that have then in a field where there might be other people that have had problems but there might be a lot of people who have had great preparation yeah because yeah. they're not a level playing field yeah and then and like even you didn't even mention but like picking up injuries and things along the way like you yeah. can be yeah. I could probably count on one hand the number I played th- over 300 games of rugby and I could probably count on one hand the number that I'd say I was 100% fit like yeah. you're always yeah, carrying yeah. things that and so from, sometimes it's just unlucky if it happens to be the week before you're going to the Olympics yeah exactly <laughs> so from that whole experience like what do you think that what have you taken away from it in terms of like how it's changed you how you now see like and, re- and reflect on on your career and what happens next and is, yeah. it, is it was it is it left any sort of like lasting feelings or anything or no I think like I've got a never give up attitude I yeah. think and and that was really important to me I don't want to have any regrets so I wanted to always make sure that I did everything and I left everything on the line and I think straight after the Olympics it was really difficult to come to terms with it because mm-hmm. I was like I should be really excited mm-hmm. and really happy that I've just gone to Olympic Games and on the other hand I've just not done the performance I wanted to do yeah. so that was really hard to then not have a negative yeah. experience in my mind of the Olympic Games. And I think, but now I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Like I've come to terms that like I work so hard to get to that point and I deserve to go. I know mm. I deserve to go to that Olympic Games. So when I look back, I, I don't necessarily just look at the Olympics. I look at the, the pathway to okay. that yeah. and what I put in every year to get to that point. So I yeah. think that's awesome because like, being an Olympian is a is, a, is an, an incredible privilege, and you, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. But if you the sorts of things that we can take out of, from from people are, that are watching is it's is that process of actually just mm. stayed in the game and you just kept on working. Yeah. And we have a phrase in sport, and it gets bounced around quite a lot now. But you can control the controllables. Like in that situation, there was so much was out of your control. So all you had to do, or all you could do which is keep training and there would have been stuff over the years that were leading into that yeah. but it's just like you say just don't give up don't give up don't give up and whether that's bring that into calisthenics if, someone, if you're trying to do something it's your first impossible like going to the Olympics when you were 16 you'd go oh, I don't know like hmm. I don't think I'm going to go like it's, it's yeah. a big deal like I, I've got to do this and I've got to pass this event like but you stayed in the game you kept on working and you achieved a dream and no one can ever then take that away from you you are an Olympian and yeah. that's cool like yeah. no, it's there'll really be some cool. stuff that you look back on and you go okay yeah, but I don't know there's how many people go to the Olympics, the percentage of, of Olympians of all time who don't look back on it and go, I'm not fully happy with how that went. Yeah. Like, unless you're going to break a world record and win a gold medal, even then. Like, we've had, I've trained athletes, there's one girl who went to the um, Paralympics, broke a world record by two seconds and came second. And you're like, what does it take to win a gold medal? Yeah. But she still like, was two seconds better than she'd ever been before. And it's, so I think it's, I, I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is that, that it, it, it's such a complex thing, but the, the consistent thing that we see from people is you just got to work for it and you've got to stay, stay in it and you never know where it might go. Yeah. Yeah. And like with, the, with this, the journey that we go through in calisthenics, a lot of the time we're, we're working towards doing something that feels impossible and there's a lot of controllables that are in your control, but there's some that are outside of them and and it's a case of just getting happy with those and just working with what you've got being com- yeah. uh, being complacent no what's the word I'm looking for not like complacent like um, you know when you're happy like is it a content, C- content. content. Is, it, is, it, is it a C word it was a C word yeah <laughs> how many syllables <laughs> don't you <laughs> so after the Olympics fast forward a year and you focus on kayak marathon yeah mm-hmm. won the world championship I did yes tick <laughs> world champ <laughs> Um, and then it was, but it was during that point as well when you started to focus on that and when you started to get introduced to, or you, you, you met up with Tim and I'll let Tim tell the story a little bit, but I just remember Tim ringing me up and going, yeah, I've, I've met Lani, she's flipping massive. <laughs> I don't know like, how that's that's right. 
<laughs> that as in like I muscles. Didn't say, I didn't say that. She was talking as about a lady muscles. like that. <laughs> <laughs> like she's way bigger than us. Um, yeah, so, so we have a, a colleague, or a mutual friend really, that I've known for a long time um, called Emma, who is working as a performance lifestyle advisor. And she got in touch with me and said that there was a, one of her athletes, and she said, you didn't have a name to start off with because <laughs> of this confidentiality thing. So I was talking about an anonymous person. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a conversation about, about Lani, and she was in Nottingham, wanting to transition out of, um, out of the sport into working in, in health, fitness, PT. Um, and did I know anybody that might be able to sort of guide her? So I was like, oh yeah, cool, we'll have a conversation. I always like to meet up with athletes because it's just nice people. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we'd have a coffee at least. Um, and then we sort of, we just met up and then we've obviously got the, the Paralympic side of stuff, but with, with Lani's background in, um, in kayaking, I said to Dave before I went down, I guess she's gonna be flipping strong. Because uh, the, the amount of gym work that these guys do is, uh, is impressive. And uh, I've, I've, I've seen kayakers and, and worked with them before. And so we, um, did we go in the gym that first day or not? I can't remember. Yeah, I think I came and shadowed one of your sessions. Oh, that's but... right, yeah, with Rich and some yeah. of the guys. And then we trained a little bit and then, like, so we get around and, and Lani, like, she just took her hoodie off. And I looked at her shoulders and I went, I'm flipping <laughs> jealous of those. I was like, <laughs> I remember you even doing that. Crikey, I rang Dave up and I went, you see the size of her biceps? <laughs> in, a, in a nice way. Okay, thanks. In a, yeah, we're tired of these. Way, I know. <laughs> um, and, just, and just as part, and just to, like, to, to get into that in a little bit, in, in terms of your journey in training and, become, and getting strong, I remember mm. talking to you when you said, you know, you couldn't, when you first went to kayak and everyone started, everyone started training and everyone's doing pull-ups and you couldn't even do one. And I think a lot of people we'll see you doing stuff now and obviously you have built up that strength but like how how difficult was it at the start building it up and how long have you been training to to make you know some of the stuff that you're doing yeah. now like almost seem easy yeah. just to put it in perspective for people i've been in the gym for 10 years so like when yeah when i first started um in the gym i remember that we were doing a circuit and we had to do pull-ups and i i was like okay fine yeah and I went to do one and I couldn't even do one. And I think it was 30 seconds on, whatever off. <laughs> I was like, well, I can't even do one. That's a waste of 30 seconds, isn't it? Like, what am I going to do? Just stand there and twiddle my thumbs. <laughs> like, yeah. just do some bicep there. curls yeah. instead. <laughs> I remember going home and calling my mum and being like, mum, I can't even do a chin up. Like, <laughs> she's like, it's fine, don't worry, you'll get it. Um, and then, yeah, literally, because of, in the environment, I was training in the club system then. So I was like, right, I've just got to, just got to keep on going, and yeah. just kept on going at it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so, how yeah. many gym sessions were you doing a week? So it varies. So in the winter, we'll do a lot more land-based mm-hmm. uh, training. So we do, we could do up to five gyms a week. Yeah. And then you'll do like either swimming or running, and then sometimes some some paddles yeah. as and well. And when you've been doing that for ten years, you're going to yeah. get strong. <laughs> And, then, and yeah. how long of that time were you sort of under the, um, the tutelage of a, a full-time s and uh, About eight years. Okay, so yeah. it's a long time. So it's a structured program and, yeah. and again, that's, that's just a testament of, of again, like I said before, mm. is having time in the game is what just builds the resources. It's yeah, not, definitely. It's not easy. When I first um, got put in touch with the strength and conditioning coaches in Australia and I was still a, I think I was under 23 or just last year juniors and the only thing we did was technique mm. he was like I don't want you to lift weights I just want to work on your technique and at first I was like oh, I just want to lift but he was just ingrained it ingrained it ingrained it and when I came over to the UK and started doing gym with another SNC coach he was like oh it's great you've got the technique yeah. down pat and then now we can start to yeah. progress yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's so important and I can't hammer home how important it is to do focus mm. on the technique yeah. to begin with to yeah. prevent injury but. but would you say that from when you started calisthenics because we've seen a change since we started working together from where you were doing um stuff before like obviously the outcome is slightly different and the the, the cause but i saw you in the gym last week i think we did a session mm. and i was like I've been moving really well from when we first went in and like you're working on muscle ups and you, even just you've gone right back to the basics and so you pull up and started yeah. to tidy that up and, and see like a bit more of a, a, a focus on the quality of the movement around that. Does yeah. that kind of link across with, was that, is that now, do you, do you see more importance in that or was it, 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 do you see that it was when you were doing, when you were working, or when you were training in canoeing that that was just a, <clears throat> kind of in that, that squad environment just everyone's just getting in just getting stuff done and it was, yeah. wasn't actually so much precise, precision about it or? yeah no like I think when you're in that squad environment and you've got eight girls or however many girls it is everyone's competing yeah. even if they're not meant to be competing you're always going to be competing yeah. so um, 
I think it's been really good this year and I have did you would focus on yourself mm. but you'd always have like for me in that in my group of girls I was always the smallest and I always didn't lift as much as them yeah. but it was power to weight so actually I was strong but it's so hard when you're seeing other people lift so much weight and you're like oh I can't lift that yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so no I think definitely this year I've just focused on on me mm. and what what is best for me and and I haven't had the um, access to physios because I'm not on the program anymore this year so I've been so had to really be in tune with my body and make sure I did all the mob mobilization yeah. that I could do and that I wasn't just I was focusing on the technique in the gym mm. um, and yeah I think incorporating calisthenics into my training this year has helped a lot because you focus so much on stability side yeah, of things yeah, and yeah. kayaking you need that stability, yeah. otherwise you're in the water all the time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Which is not, not conducive to winning a world championship. No, not at all. <laughs> and how have you found it then? Obviously, so you, you had that first meeting, that first conversation with Tim where you yeah. thought you were like going to get some experience on S&C and PT because you were going to want to go into that. Yeah. And then actually got wangled into this. Let's try and do some cool stuff hanging off bars and, and whatnot. How have you found like, <laughs> No, I loved you, it. You're smiling too, obviously, yeah. you found it. And, and we're super excited to have you on board as one of, one of our coaches. And like, Thank but you. Just how have you, how have you found that way of, way of training? And, you know, I guess you've, you've, you've come with that 10 years of building up like the strength yeah. base and you, you get to do some cool stuff with it mm. now. But how's that been like? No, yeah, cast, really good. Like, well, I, I'd always seen like on Instagram all these cool like moves that people do, and these. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that looks really awesome. And I remember, I think I remember looking online and looking at calisthenics stuff, and there wasn't that much stuff. And then, then I found you guys, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, I think it was just when you guys were starting out, at the beginning no, of 2016. Yeah, we you really weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. but like, it, it was like, um, and then yeah, I remember when I met up with you in. January, I think it was, mm. and you're like, "Oh, try a flag," and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> okay, couldn't do it." I remember, I remember, I remember yeah. Tim going, "It was like, and she pretty much did her flag straight away." <laughs> yeah, like she's being humble now, but when she first did a flag, she held it in that position with feet off the ground. I, I remember saying to Ring and Dave, "We're going. It's not a million miles away. Yeah, Give yeah. that a few more months, and and that'll yeah. be in the locker." But it's just some of that. You just you just came with a good training background, yeah. And I think that again, like we just flip it into a take home message. Is it's just. There's some things where like, I get frustrated with my, with my calisthenics training. I'm not moving forward as quickly as I want. But getting getting strong and, and fitting that all together, like it's not it's not we we it's been massively oversimplified in some cases by the fitness industry, and in that we think we can just constantly it's just getting just getting stronger. Yeah, you do, but it, and it takes time. But it, yeah. especially in calisthenics, it's not the same as just lifting dumbbells week in week out. We're asking ourselves to, to move in brand new ways, yeah. to create tension in new ways, and if you, especially like like us slightly older like we're not nine ten years old anymore like the, the system's got a, a little bit more stress in it and there's a bit more of a, um, a, a higher demand on, on us actually learning or high complexity of learning new skills um, so just throwing it all in it's, 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 not, it's not easy but the thing that you've got to do again it goes back to what you say about the, the games experience before us is just even though there's going to be plateaus and there's going to be difficult times, like just keep training and mix it up into things that you enjoy. And, and I guess that's been something for you that you've had 10 years of gym training where like kayak training for the, for the gym is, from an SNC coach is probably not that exciting. It's quite boring. It's a lot of push and pull, right? <laughs> a lot of push and pull. <laughs> push and pull, push and pull, and a bit more push and pull. So to come so, out from where you've been from an athletic perspective and then now actually come into calisthenics and go like, I want to learn to muscle up. And it, you've, you've now got that a little bit of a love for, for learning and love for movement yeah. back in and something which you can, you can apply what you've done before. But then also like now you've got new things which you can't currently do. Yeah. And I guess that's probably quite a humbling thing for I'm an Olympian and then you come in the gym, like everyone gets yeah, that yeah. since you come in the gym and all of a sudden you go, I think I should be able to do that. Yeah. Why can't I do a ring muscle up? Yeah. Which you can now do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's just like the one thing I, I really like about calisthenics and it, it's similar, similar with kayaking is they're both very technical. And for me in kayaking, I had to be, very good at my technique mm. because I wasn't the strongest so I couldn't rely on my strength in the water I needed to make sure I was being efficient as efficient as possible and with calisthenics you can be as strong as possible but if you're not using the right technique and going through those steps yeah, you're not yeah, going to yeah. get to the end result yeah, so yeah. that's what I really like about it as well and yeah and it's so nice to be able to challenge yourself again working in the gym for 10 years it's, it does get a bit boring yeah, yeah. and um I just love the functional side of it as well because 
yeah, I never want to, I've always said, like, I never want to get to a stage where I can't lift my own body weight. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's so important that everyone can, to, can do yeah. that because you never know when you're going to need to pull yourself out of something or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it might be the same for you, like, I'm interested to know the same for you. Um, so my last question that when I came out of pro rugby, it was a case of um, a massive lack of motivation, which I'd never struggled with before mm. when there was no game at the weekend. So yeah. when you've made the decision that you're not going to carry on, you know, you're not going to try and go to Tokyo 2020, yeah. like <clears throat> to come in the gym and get excited about learning like a new thing for me was like really, uh, it's like a new lease of life in terms of my training. Yeah, um, definitely. Well, like, as I say, this year I've structured, like I've been training at my canoe club in Nottingham, Nottingham Kayak Club. And we've, you know, my, I've structured my training how I want to. So I've got a coach down there, um, Norman, and he, he'll plan our water sessions. And then, you know, we do our gym as a group. We decide what we want to do. you guys got these sorted. <laughs> <laughs> so by adding calisthenics into my training this year, yeah. I definitely think it's helped. I remember you asked me last week, mm. do you think it's helped? And I was like, I, I do actually think it has. Because you, people think when you do body weight exercises, oh, it's just your body weight. It's, yeah. for beginners, it's not right? that hard. Yeah. But there are ways of making it very difficult. And when we had the conversation yeah. the other day, I was like, well, do I do dumbbell bench press or do I do um, press ups on the ups? rings? Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm using more stability. I'm using my core more and locking on my glutes and everything by doing the ring press ups. Yeah. And they're just as hard as if I was going to yeah, do, yeah. try and get 12 reps out on a certain weight of dumbbells. So yeah. it's a really, I'm really loving it. I think it's yeah. great. So last question from me then. So from a calisthenics perspective, What's, what are you working towards? What are your goals? Um, what's your, yeah, what's in, what's in the impossible box? Yes. I want to do, be able to do a handstand and hold it for yeah. 30 seconds or, yeah, and a, make it a, comfortable. A nice, Just okay. a nice, yeah. Tidy it up. Yeah, and muscle up. Definitely like on the bar. On the bar. Yeah, to be fair, I want to do it all really. Yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I, think I don't want to all stop. I don't, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. a flag, definitely. But I think when I first started, I was like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. And you, it almost can be overwhelming because you're like yeah. trying to work on everything. But mm. I think it's important just to focus on one or two. And then once you've got that down pat, move God, on. She, she, Sounds like Stevenson. Good. Sounds like Tim. <laughs> she's good. Hey. It's true. <laughs> So that, we're going to wrap it up, I think. Yeah, yeah. I hope cool. this is obviously Lani, and I hope you've enjoyed getting to know her a little bit better. We certainly have, and we're really excited to, to um, be doing more stuff with Lani, and you're going to see loads more coming out from her in terms of tutorials, and we're going to try and do some stuff that's focused around mm -hmm. a little bit, some specific stuff for females um, as well, which is a really cool little area for us to be looking at as well. Perfect. Nice. So if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel and you want to see some more of these beautiful people, then you need to tick up there in that <laughs> box. We've got our free beginner's guide, which is going to give you everything you need to get started in calisthenics, somewhere around Dave's armpit. <laughs> and for last week's Q&A, that's up there. Click that and have a watch. And until next time. Class dismissed. She's good. <laughs>